What's up, everybody? It's Taylor Twaman from Major League Soccer and Apple TV. Labor Day weekend is upon us, and we are in the final stretch of the MLS regular season. So today, I'm going to give you the top five things I'm looking at as we head into the playoff race. Twaman's takes. Number five. These two teams in the West have missed the playoffs the last two seasons, and both have been revived under their new managers. But which one are you betting on to finish higher in the standings, and maybe even do something in the playoffs? The Portland Timbers or the Colorado Rapids? Now, the Portland Timbers are exciting as any team in the league. The fact that they've scored the second most goals from the run of play with only Inner Miami bettering that is amazing. Evander should be in the MVP conversation, severely underrated from the casual fan in MLS. A brilliant player who makes the game look so easy. And then all of that, they come off beating their rivals, their best performance of the season, 1-0. A 1-0 game that gives them confidence going into the final stretch, where five of their last seven games are versus playoff opponents. Hmm. But something is a brewing in Colorado. Chris Armas and company have won seven of the last ten, and in dramatic fashion like coming back at FC Dallas this past weekend. Zach Steffen peaks and valleys. He's got to be better for them. He knows that. But they've created the second most expected goals and scored the third most. You couple that with the mentality of their manager, and I think Chris Armas is right. Why not the Rapids? Who's to say they don't make a push for a home playoff game as their remaining schedule is very favorable with so many games at home? Keep an eye on the Rapids as they chase LAFC and RSL for the number two seed. Number four. Before the season started, I had Orlando City as the team that would make a run at the Supporter Shield. I did. They were brilliant last year. They only lost two of their last 17 games and eventually lost to the MLS Cup champions Columbus Crew. But that was at home, and I completely underestimated how that would affect this team. They came out of the gates in 2024, got hammered by Miami 5-0 to then compound it with only four wins in their first 18 games. Only the Philadelphia Union have had fewer wins at home, meaning Nashville and New England and Chicago have had more. And those teams are at the bottom of the East. Now, it's important to recognize they've settled the Duncan McGuire contract situation and given them a new one. But they've also moved Ojeda to the 10 position. And now everything looks to have a purpose and a flow. They've won six of the last nine. Ojeda's now the playmaker, which means what? Fagundo Torres is the attacker. Since then, seven goals, two assists. So you couple that form and the confidence along with their remaining schedule only two of their seven versus playoff teams remaining, it wouldn't surprise me if they push for a home playoff game. But maybe they don't want that. Number three, have we seen the end of the Seattle Sounders? Let me get right to it. Yes. And that doesn't mean they can't do something in the playoffs, but this is not the Seattle Sounders that we've known for the last seven years. And what a run it's been. Since 2016, they've been to four MLS Cups, winning two of those, winning a CONCACAF Champions League title, missing the playoffs only once that all adding to three open cup trophies and a supporter shield they've already won but that success was mostly done by a partnership with garth lagerway and brian schmetzer and they did their work in the summer transfer window dempsey ladero rui diaz all three massive figures in their history they defined success by being very aggressive in the biggest shopping window in the world they have not signed a player in the summer for the last three years three and in the summer of 2022 garth logway said quote on a team official podcast by the way they would have to change we have to adapt and tweak the model otherwise lafc could be the team to chase for years to come end quote since then garth is in atlanta schmetzer's left with the team being led by rusnak morris and rolled on all three solid players good characters but not headliners and before you lose your mind seattle sounders fans follow me with this they are perfect complementary players to at least two or three designated players like Obafemi Martins, Clint Dempsey, Rui Diaz, Ladero. And if you don't sign those players, then guess what? The second fewest goal scored from open play will now be the standard for this team. A lot of eyeballs on the ownership and Craig Weibel on what they do next. Number two. I cannot wait for September 14th, a match day where we get a lot of answers to our questions. Atlanta must win at home versus one of the worst teams in Nashville. Miami at Philadelphia as they chase the supporter shield clinching and maybe Messi returns. 
How about El Trafico with Giroux and Royce in the black and gold chasing their rivals for home field advantage in the number one seed in the West? And then the game of the week, hell is real, in Cincinnati, as they both chase the number two seed in the East, which makes this all the more interesting. It's a rematch of the Eastern Conference Final, but ironically, Cincinnati hasn't recovered. They've only won seven games so far at home in 2024 after losing that game to Columbus Crew where they were dominant at home in 2023 winning the Shield. While Columbus know in the last 44 games at home, they've only lost twice. One of those was the Cincinnati. I'm not saying the East comes down to them because Miami's been so good and they'll have the number one seed. But what if some chance Miami loses? Then it has to go through Ohio. And there are so many concerns about Cincinnati right now with Acosta not being at their best and they're just not the same without them while their rivals are in the best of ways. Even when they play badly like they did against New York City in Philadelphia this past week, they win. So who wins the West? Who wins Ohio? That will all be answered on September 14th. And finally, number one. I had no idea what to expect after watching the preseason from Inner Miami. The most mileage ever traveled in a preseason by an MLS team. And then so many season-ending injuries at the beginning of the season. I I didn't see a team full of a run in them where they would set a record. Messi's only played 18 of 38 MLS games since coming over. But it was the signing of Luis Suarez that had me perplexed. That knee did not look healthy. It looks like it forces him to run and move awkwardly at times. And yet he reminds everyone, especially me, That class is permanent. 16 goals, 5 assists in 16 starts. I get it. It's the deepest roster ever put together in MLS history. And one could argue that Campana would have similar stats. But I don't know if I buy that. Suarez has been clinical, efficient for Tata Martino. As they are now on the verge of setting a points record in MLS regular season history. And they also have Messi coming back. Who week in and week out without him. They've still been worth the price of admission. So when they hoist the supporter shield, they may need to put Suarez on their shoulders as he may be the winner of the Golden Boot and MVP. It's possible. There are a few games this week on MLS season pass, none bigger than my former club, New England Revolution, hosting the city that raised me in St. Louis City, and then the return to a full slate on September 14th where we get a ton of answers to our questions. See you then. (laughs) 